Welcome back to part one of God Speaks About Our Fear. This week, uh, week's kitchen Bible study, I have my Bible. Hopefully you've got your Bible. I have my coffee cup. Hopefully you have yours. And a kitchen table or someplace near. Let's sit down and look at God's Word. Specifically this week of God Speaks About Fear. Let's look. But before we begin... Are there any questions from last week's Bible study? I don't see any questions, so let's keep going with this week's Bible study. How does God's Word speak to my fear, my anxiety? As we saw last week, God's Word must be put in context. Years ago, early in ministry, I had many come to me and saying, I am confessing my sin, 1 John 1, 9. But there's still a, a sense of guilt, a sense that it hasn't been taken care of. I'm not being able to let go. Something is wrong. Well, nothing's wrong on God's side, because 1 John 1, 9 is true for all Christians, those who place their trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There's no clauses there. It's guaranteed. It is all in the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his death, burial, and resurrection. So it's available to all Christians, all of God's children, all of God's sheep. But in the context, oftentimes they're not, they're using things they're trying to confess of uh, worldly euphemisms or in some cases not even acknowledging their sin. Not directly, but not understanding. We're we have the full aspect of God's forgiveness, but 1 John 1, 9 gives us clear instruction. If we confess our sin, now the Greek there for confess means homologeo. It means to say the same thing. To confess our sin, we need to be saying the same thing that God says about our sin. A, that what God says is sin, I did that, I confess it, God, and turn to you. I trust in the finished work of you through Jesus Christ, your Son, my Lord and Savior. In so doing, we acknowledge that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, even within salvation, and we call upon God. We are agreeing with God. Not only what is sin, what is right and what is wrong, as God defines it in his written word, but also that we are confessing it. As we do this, notice 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, Homo we say the same thing that God says about our sin. As we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. As we do this, God not only forgives us, cleanses us spiritually of all unrighteousness, but in the process also that weight of guilt. Our greatest blessings are indeed spiritual, but also there is an emotional impact too, that sense of guilt. Guilt comes from the aspects, both from our own, since we're created in the image of God, we have a sense internally, even before we're saved, of what's right and what's wrong. And that interplays with our that emotional feeling of guilt. We also, however, after salvation, have the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin. So as we agree, God forgives us, cleanses us of all unrighteousness, but there is that indeed an emotional impact, that burden of guilt is lifted from us. And indeed, it was on Jesus on the cross all those years ago. How does God do that? I don't know. But he does, and I believe him. Even if I can't comprehend it, I can certainly be thankful for it and to accept it. If God can do that with sin and guilt, then can God do that with fear and anxiety? Yes, he can. But we must follow God's word in context. As we look for passages about fear in God's word, in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says of the demons, they believe in the existence of God. They even shudder in fear. So the fear of the demons is so great, uh, they actually tremble. But this isn't for us. <laughs> uh, we're not demons. This refers to the enemies of God, not to God's children by faith. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, Perfect love casts out all fear. 
But look at the context of the passage. It's a wonderful promise for God's children, but it's referring to a very specific fear, the fear of future judgment. But since we've called upon Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that judgment occurred in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, on the cross all those years ago. Praise God for that. So this is something as a Christian we already have. So we need to find a what God speaks to a general verse that speaks to our general fears and anxieties. And that can be found, of the many that can be found, is in Philippians chapter 4. And we'll continue in that passage in part 2. At this point, uh, because of copyright laws, you can sing your own hymns, as long as it's not for public uh, uh, presentation. You can sing whatever hymn you want to, or scripture song, uh, or pray, or share. But as we stop, let's continue in a spirit of worship and prayer, and let's get ready for part two in Philippians chapter four of God Speaks About Fear. <music> 